Mama's Window by Lynn Rubright Furious at the church folks and mad at his uncle, Sugar stood on the dock and watched Uncle Free pull out of the swamp into the bayou. Then Sugar stormed back inside. He plopped down on his cot and began picking at the frayed fishnet. After a few minutes, Sugar got up and looked inside the box of clothes. Clothes just like Mama would have bought for Christmas or Easter, he thought. Tears filled his eyes. With a sudden sweep of his arm, Sugar flung the box on the floor. Shirt, pants, shoes, socks, and underwear went flying. He collapsed onto his cot and wept. You actin' like a baby, Sugar said to himself as his sobbing subsided. Just feelin' sorry for yourself. He picked up the clothes from the floor and laid them out on the cot. Then he walked over to the old lead sink, took off his overalls, and began pumping icy spring water over his head. Woo! Sugar said, shivering. He scrubbed his hair, face, ears, neck, and arms with Uncle Free's lye soap. He rubbed himself dry in a hurry to get warm. Quickly, Sugar put on his new underwear, shirt, and pants. He glanced in the mirror as he brushed his hair. Uncle Free had insisted on trimming Sugar's hair a few days ago. Why you gotta mess with my hair? Sugar had complained. Nobody care how long it gets. I care, Uncle Free had said. So that's why Uncle Free want to cut my hair, Sugar said. So it looked nice for the dedication. Sugar grabbed his new shoes, stuffing the socks into the toes as he ran out the door. He placed the shoes in the bow of his boat where they wouldn't get wet. Swiftly, he untied the boat from the dock and climbed into the stern. He shoved off with his pole, careful not to splash water on his new clothes. Sugar wasn't sure why he was all dressed up, hurrying towards Cypress Grove. He didn't want to go to the dedication of the new Sweet Kingdom Church. Conflicting emotions bubbled up inside him. Nevertheless, he pulled forward quickly and smoothly. As he approached Cypress Grove, Sugar could see the new brick church nestled among the trees. Maybe Uncle Free be right, thinking Mama might agree with the trustee committee, Sugar thought. Rounding the bend, Sugar saw the crowd gathered near the shoreline of Sun Lake. They were getting ready to parade up the path into the church for the sermon and singing part of the ceremony. Nobody seemed to notice Sugar enter the cove and slip under the weeping willow branches. He pulled alongside Uncle Free's boat and rolled up his pant legs so they wouldn't get wet when he stepped into the shallow water. He pulled the bow of his boat onto the grass, adjusted his clothes, and put on his new socks and shoes. Ouch, Sugar said when he stood up. Uncle Free got everything right except these shoes. They too tight. Sugar watched the procession of folks in their Sunday best from behind the canopy of willow fronds. At least I'd be dressed like Mama would have wanted if I was going to the dedication, he thought. Which I ain't. Pastor Williams led the way, followed by the choir, dressed in their flowing scarlet robes, singing, Walking Up the King's Highway, Mama's favorite hymn, thought Sugar. Then came the church members, singing along with the choir, Girls in starched ruffled frocks, white socks and Sunday shoes, and boys in pressed pants and shirts and freshly shined shoes marched proudly with their parents. Bringing up the rear was Mr. Savas and the trustee board members, followed by Mrs. Pearson with Stewie in tow. Sugar noticed Uncle Free was lagging behind, limping along slowly but looking good in his new store-bought clothes, in spite of his bent body. Uncle Free ain't no swamp rat, he thought, no matter what Stewie Pearson say. Sugar watched the last of the congregation enter the church before he shot out from under the willow branches and raced up the path. He rushed past his uncle, around toward the front of the church where the stained glass window should have been. Impulsively, Sugar reached down and grabbed a rock. His new shoes pinched, but he barely noticed. He thrust back his arm and aimed at the center of the window. Then abruptly, Sugar dropped the rock. He spun around and almost crashed into Uncle Free, who had run after him, bad leg and all. Uncle Free grabbed Sugar with his good arm. It was Mama, Sugar sobbed, pressing his face against Uncle Free's shoulder. 
I wanted to break that plain glass window, but Mama wouldn't let me do it. Uncle Free held the trembling boy close. That don't surprise me, son, Uncle Free said. I told you she just might want you to go to the dedication, not to wreck the church window, even a plain glass one. Uncle Free pulled his handkerchief from his pocket and wiped Sugar's face. I see you did a good job washing up, but now your face all stained with tears, said Uncle Free, examining Sugar. Do clothes fit nice. Look good, too. Let's go on inside. But, Uncle Free, I don't want to go to the dedication. Can't we just go back home, Sugar pleaded. Please? Uncle Free gently but firmly grabbed Sugar's arm and led him toward the front door to the church. Sometimes we gotta do things we don't want to do, James Earl. This here's one of them times. There was no arguing with Uncle Free when he spoke in that tone of voice. Sugar and Uncle Free entered through the heavy oak doors that framed the entrance to the new sweet kingdom church. The choir and congregation were harmonizing on the last stanza of Great Day, Great Day, the righteous marching, Great Day. Pastor Wilson looked up from the freshly varnished pulpit and saw Free McBride and Sugar standing behind the last pew. He beckoned them to come down front. Sugar, staring at the black curtain in front of the window, was frozen in his spot. Uncle Free squeezed Sugar's arm and nudged him to move, but Sugar resisted and tried to pull away. Uncle Free bent down and whispered, James Earl, we go into the front of the church. I know you don't wanna, but you ain't got no choice. There was no breaking away from Uncle Free. Together, they made their way down the aisle. Swamp rats, hissed Stewie, wedged between his mama and daddy. Hush, boy, Mr. Pearson's voice was as sharp as a viper's tongue. Uncle Free pressed his fingers around Sugar's arm. Ignore that, son, he whispered. Sugar didn't turn around. He kept walking as if in a trance. There were two empty chairs in the front row where the deacons sat. Pastor Williams gestured them to the seats of honor. Sugar didn't feel like being honored. All he wanted was to escape back to Uncle Free's shack in the swamp. Stewie's right, Sugar thought. I'm a swamp rat. I don't deserve to be in a fancy church like this. Maybe when Mama was alive, but no more. It don't matter that I'm wearing nice new clothes. I'm nothing but a swamp rat like Uncle Free. Sugar was so deep in thought he barely heard Pastor William's sermon, which was about understanding and loving one another and the importance of having dreams. Then the pastor called Mr. Pearson to come forward to say a few words. Making his way to the pulpit, he cast a friendly look in Sugar's direction. Sugar turned away, not wanting to face Mr. Pearson. "'James Earl,' said Mr. Pearson, looking directly at Sugar. "'Your mama, Ida Mae Martin,' Had a dream. Yeah, thought Sugar, and y'all stole it. He stared up at the black curtain draped in front of where Mama's window should have been. But it was Ida May's son, James Earl, who kept his Mama dream for a stained glass window alive when the rest of us lost sight of it. Mr. Pearson went on, James Earl, would you please step up here? What's all this talk about dreams, Sugar was thinking when Uncle Free nudged him. Get up, son, whispered Uncle Free. Mr. Pearson calling you up to the front. Feeling numb, Sugar walked toward the pulpit. James Earl, said Mr. Pearson, would you please pull this cord? Pastor Williams put a thin rope in Sugar's palm. It was attached to the black curtain on a pulley. Mr. Savas and Pastor Williams nodded, and Sugar tugged. Suddenly, the curtain fell to the floor, revealing a window with the sun shining through red, pink, purple, green, yellow, and blue stained glass. Black angels floated up and down a shimmering staircase that reached into a heaven of blue and white clouds. There were gasps from the congregation as folks jumped to their feet and burst into applause. Sugar couldn't take his eyes off the beautiful window. Stumbling, he returned to his seat next to Uncle Free. When folks settled down, Mr. Pearson continued. Sugar was barely listening. It was James Earl Faith in Ida Mae's dream, with some help from an anonymous donor, that led to the stained glass window being installed in time for this dedication, said Mr. Pearson.
Sugar jolted to attention. Anonymous donor? Who that be, he wondered, and why they want to keep it a secret. The trustee board knew what was best for our physical well-being by building a church out of brick, said Mr. Pearson. But it was Ida May who knew what was best for our souls. James Earl knew it, too. James Earl was even willing to fight for it. Then Mr. Pearson led the congregation into a fresh round of applause, sprinkled with loud, joyous shouts of Amen, Glory be, and praise the Lord. Pastor Williams nodded, and the choir started to sing, Glory, Alleluia, a great day is a-coming. The congregation began to chant the Amen chorus. All Sugar could do was sit there staring at Mama's window. Before he knew it, Sugar was swept outside into the lawn with Uncle Free and folks from the congregation. Church women served everyone platters of fried chicken, barbecue ribs, greens, potato salad, coleslaw, baked beans, watermelon slices, fresh apple pies, and jugs of lemonade and iced tea. Mama's old friends fussed over Sugar as if he was some kind of hero. While the grown-ups visited, the children ran off and played statues and tag. Sugar joined them. Stewie hung back. Hey, Stewie, Sugar hollered. Come on. Reluctantly, Stewie entered the games. Sugar acted as if nothing bad had happened between them. He knew this was not a time to hold a grudge. Now and again, Sugar heard Uncle Free's laugh above the din of the crowd. It reminded Sugar of how Uncle Free and Mama used to laugh together. Finally, Uncle Free came over and called to Sugar. We gotta get back for dark, son. They pulled themselves away from the crowd and waved goodbye. Hey, Sugar, one of the children called after them. You promised us a ride in your boat. Someday soon, Sugar called back. Uncle Free and Sugar slipped under the great weeping willow. They removed their shoes and socks, waded into the shallow water, and hopped into their boats. Sugar led the way across Sun Lake. As he maneuvered into the bayou, Sugar shouted, Look, Uncle Free! Swamp vines blooming there on that cypress tree. So it is, Sugar, called Uncle Free. You noticing all sorts of things you never paid no mind for now. It was true. Sugar pointed to a great blue heron daintily tiptoeing along the edge of the water. Then he looked up, and through the canopy of cypresses, he saw an eagle circling high above. Sugar also noticed how the sun shining through the overhanging mosses made delicate patterns on the water and how the water sparkled in the dappled light. Sugar rode along in silence. After a while, he called out, Uncle Free, there's something else I noticed. You seem to know all about the stained glass window being in place for the dedication. Well, said Uncle Free, I know what you know. Some anonymous donor paid for the window to be put in the church. That's all there was to it. That ain't all there was to it, and you know it. Maybe somebody just wanted to be a secret, said Uncle Free. That somebody be you, Sugar exclaimed. Uncle Free didn't say a word. Mama knew just what she was doing when she sent me to live with you, didn't she, Uncle Free, said Sugar. She sure did, son. She knew exactly what she was doing. Lots more than I knew what she was doing. Uncle Free let out a laugh that echoed all the way to Cypress Grove. Sugar laughed too, sounding just like Uncle Free. As the sun set over the swamp, the shack came into view. We're almost there, Uncle Free, said Sugar. We're almost home. <laughs>